A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, word began to spread of a game called Star Wars 1313. It promised striking visuals, a blend of adventure-tinged cinematics and scripted gameplay moments, and an impressive character-driven narrative. But despite all its ambitions, things didn't exactly pan out. The project was abruptly trashed like so many battle droids. These days, Star Wars 1313 is something of a cult legend among fans. Very little of the game was ever actually shown, yet the few glimpses that LucasArts released were enough to get both the gaming and Star Wars communities hyped. Clearly, there was a lot of interest in the title, and interest means money. And yet, Disney, no stranger to money, canceled the game when they purchased the Lucas Empire, and has barely spoken of it since. While that seems insane at first glance, a deeper dive reveals that 1313 was the victim of a broader strategy in which it simply didn't fit. Strap on your flight helmets, nerf herders, because we're taking a look at why Disney will never release Star Wars 1313. I got a bad feeling about this. Disney checks out. Disney shocked the entertainment world when they purchased Lucasfilm and its subsidiaries in 2012, and then shocked it again when they shut down Lucas's video game division, LucasArts. That's impossible! Believe it or not, the acquisition of such a veteran game developer didn't exactly benefit the rest of Disney's gaming business. Why? Because the rest of Disney's gaming business was already shrinking. Just weeks before the LucasArts shutdown, Epic Mickey developer Junction Point was also given the pink slip. In May 2016, Disney hammered the final nail in the coffin by shuttering its own video game division, Disney Interactive. The house of Mickey, it seemed, had no faith in video games. This place can be a little rough. But how could that be? The games industry is thriving, and Disney owns some of the most franchise-friendly intellectual properties ever. Why wouldn't they want in on that delicious Star Wars money? As always, money talks, and in this case, it was talking gibberish. In 2013, The Wall Street Journal reported that Disney Interactive had lost a staggering $1.41 billion between 2008 and 2013. Despite the success of gaming as a whole, that success wasn't translating over to the Burbank Entertainment behemoth, for whatever reason. Rather than spend more money trying to plug a sinking ship, Mickey Mouse instead grabbed a lifeboat and got off altogether. EA or nothing in terms of licensing their Star Wars games, Disney made it simple. Electronic Arts is gonna make them from here on out. EA locked Disney into a multi-year deal to exclusively produce games based on the franchise. But as long as EA is the official maker of Star Wars games, they'll want to make their own games. That means developing new titles with their own internal teams on their proprietary Frostbite engine. EA doesn't have much incentive for salvaging a title half-developed by a different team on another engine. Huh. It's true that EA resurrected the Battlefront franchise, which was formerly a LucasArts property, but they made it their own by giving it to celebrated shooter developer DICE to reboot from scratch. By contrast, 1313 had already been in development for some time, so rather than continuing where the game's devs left off, it would make more sense for EA to develop their own game in the same tone and style. Something adventurous and exciting, with a cinematic flair. And it just so happens they did, but that didn't exactly work out according to plan either. I have a bad feeling about this. There is no try. With its third-person perspective, cinematic sensibilities, and scripted spectacles, Star Wars 1313 clearly derived influence from one gaming franchise in particular, Naughty Dog's Uncharted. This series redefined the camera work, animation, and acting standards across the industry. And hey, Uncharted's main inspiration was another Lucas property, Indiana Jones. The Uncharted style and the Star Wars brand seemed made for each other. So when EA took over the gaming license for the franchise, they saw the potential for what 1313 represented, and they liked what they saw. So much so, they began their own Uncharted-style project titled Ragtag, headed by no less than Uncharted's creator Amy Hennig. The project was set up at EA's revered Visceral Games Studio, which had crafted horror masterpieces with their Dead Space series. A beloved studio, a veteran director, and an adventure cinema vibe, Ragtag had everything that 1313 once did and more. I've got a bad feeling about this. And yet, it was a disaster. In late 2017, EA not only canceled Ragtag, but shut down Visceral Games entirely. In other words, even Amy Hennig couldn't make an Uncharted-style Star Wars game, at least not at EA. That leaves 1313 itself with basically no chance at all of getting picked up. A long time ago. A fair bit of work had already been done on Star Wars 1313 when the Disney banhammer came swinging. Besides a treasure trove of great concept art, the E3 demo showed at least a decent amount of technical work had been completed as well. This isn't a minor detail. A lot of money had been poured into 1313 already. I have a bad feeling about this. 
But all that effort is years old by now. Unreal Engine 3 powered 1313, which was a great engine in its day, but its day has long passed. Unreal Engine 4 has been in the wild for several years now, and its raw technical prowess puts its predecessor to shame. Even if 1313 was absolutely cutting edge in 2013, by now it would be dulled and rusted. In other words, the window for salvaging the abandoned product has simply passed. But you are not a Jedi yet. A great disturbance. In case you've been living in a cave on Dagobah for the last 20 years, here's a quick lesson. A lot of people don't like the Star Wars prequels. They were glossy where the originals were raw, digital where the originals were practical, and honestly, poorly written and badly acted where the originals were iconic in every way. Disney was well aware of this when they purchased Lucasfilm, and ever since, they've made it their mission to make people forget the prequels happened. First, they canceled the animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars. This was a fantastic show, and no one doubted its quality. In fact, Disney immediately put the creators to work on a new series, Star Wars Rebels. When does Rebels take place? Just before the original films, bringing audiences out of the prequel headspace. Since then, very little Star Wars material has gone anywhere near the prequels. Even the new films aggressively draw influence from the original trilogy instead. We eventually learned Star Wars 1313 would be Boba Fett's origin story, i.e. his journey from young clone into legendary bounty hunter. But that time frame would have set the game squarely in prequel territory, where Disney is loath to tread. Into the Garbage Shoot if you really want to know Disney's thinking, follow the money. The Big Mouse on Campus uses a strong roster of IPs to produce diamonds from a variety of media, merchandise, and licensing, not to mention a theme park ride or two. Their franchises are their golden geese, so if Disney isn't protecting one of their projects, then they have no intention of ever releasing it to the public. In December of 2013, Disney allowed the Star Wars 1313 trademark to lapse. There's absolutely no way that Mickey and his lawyers would have allowed this to happen unless they'd wanted the project dead. There are ways for Disney to bring the trademark back from the grave, but the fact that it's remained defunct for all these years shows the level of the company's disinterest in keeping it alive. Plans can change, and maybe one day Disney will reactivate the trademark, but right now, it doesn't look like Disney has any plans to do so. The Great Jedi Purge Star Wars spent 30 years creating books, comics, video games, and any other media it could get its hands on. That meant decades worth of inconsistencies, retcons, and varying levels of official and unofficial lore. So when Disney purchased the franchise, they made a bold decision to blow the entire expanded universe to smithereens and start from scratch. Only the films and the Star Wars The Clone Wars animated series survived the purge. This was not done callously. Lucasfilm's new story group wanted to move forward with a unified canon in which all Star Wars media can form to the same mythology. To no one's surprise, this has meant a whole host of new books, new comics, and new video games. I got a bad feeling about this. Star Wars 1313 was already well into development when the old expanded universe was shown the airlock. Though it took place within the chronology of the films, telling Boba Fett's origin story, it may have made references to characters and events that are no longer an official part of Star Wars. A rescue operation here wouldn't be impossible, but a lot of work would have to be ditched and replaced to bring the story into line with the new approved canon. It's a trap. By this point, Star Wars 1313's very status as an unrealized hit makes it unattractive to Disney. Even today, the unreleased game is a relatively well-known product, which makes for a lot of expectations. Disney can handle expectations just fine, just look at The Force Awakens, but 1313 is now saddled with the baggage of nostalgia and memory of a time before the mouse ruled over Darth Vader, of an era when a Lucas ran Lucasfilm. I got a bad feeling about this. Disney has led Star Wars to enormous commercial success through a variety of media, but questions are already beginning to brew. Some critics worry about the marvelization of the series, and a vocal contingent of fans aren't happy with the direction the films are taking. There's even a petition to bring George Lucas back into the fold, and that's not even getting into the many director firings. If by some miracle, 1313 were resurrected, completed, released, and then actually well-received, this could actually blow up in Disney's face. It would prove, to those who wanted it to, that Star Wars was better before Disney, and that Lucas was the true force behind the Force. Why would Disney take the PR risk? They could just as easily make other games, or shift their focus onto other forms of media, which is exactly what they're doing. Which is why you'll probably never get to play Star Wars 1313. But who knows? Sometimes you've got to keep the faith. Or else. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Enough of this. Vader, release him. As you wish. <coughs> 
Thanks for watching. Click the SVG icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.